What we've got here is failure to communicate. Some men you just can't reach. Of course, any failure of the government to communicate sees the civilian portrayed as wrong, and the government is right. And in the case of crazy Massachusetts COVID crackdowns, it's a failure to communicate and a lot more. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. And as WHDH TV7 reports, the proprietor of the Southside Tavern in Braintree, Mass, last week watched Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito say that live music was now permitted. And he read the official government announcement about it, but he got attacked by the government nonetheless. Singing was back at the Southside Tavern in Braintree Thursday night, or so they thought after last week's announcement from Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. Restaurants will be permitted to host musical performances. This is good news, Governor. <laughs> Restaurant owner Matt Kilty said he received a call and a verbal warning from health officials after hosting a musical duo named KJ and the Foot Thursday night. For some reason I kind of like that name, KJ and the Foot. <laughs> like, where's the foot come from? And, uh, everybody's putting their best foot forward. You can't just stick your toe in the water. Especially, you know, you got your foot up in the air. I wanted to go out there and just put your best foot forward. He's got great feet. You know, he has good feet. He's another guy who has great feet. This is funny. And what did the government tell him? They say the event should never have happened because singing is still prohibited. Everybody foot loose, cut loose, foot loose. Bring your best foot forward out there. Let's go out there and, and being good little foot soldiers, you definitely have to be on your toes. Wait. Didn't the state say live music was permitted inside bars and restaurants? Well, not exactly. But Kielty said Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito's announcement allowing musical performances from last week was unclear. The owner even went to the state website himself and printed out the order. When you see, you know, permitted to host musical performances, you're going to automatically think singing. But Mr. Kielty needs to remember he's dealing with the state, which has a monopoly on the use of force and can take people's money to employ bureaucrats like Polito and Governor Charlie Baker without any worry of people opting not to pay if they're dissatisfied. So the state has very little incentive to actually be clear or straightforward with anybody. A call from the state pointing him to another section of the website. For live performances, singing and the playing of brass and wind instruments is discouraged. Singing is not permitted in any indoor performance venue. So is it discouraged or not permitted? Hmm. That's a little confusing, isn't it? Hmm. And as WHDH reports, Kilty found that screwed up manner of operation more than a bit frustrating, telling the station, It's almost impossible to find, it's buried. And now that tavern owner has to contact every band he's booked to tell them they can't play because the government will punish him if they do so. It's very, very frustrating, you know, and, and every restaurant that I know is, is equally as frustrating. You know, we're trying to get ahead. We're trying to we're trying to gear up for the spring. So by failing to properly communicate its permission, kind of, to play live music, the government has messed up important plans for numerous restaurants and live musicians, causing stress and lost opportunities and landing another blow on business people trying to survive. But there's something more universal to note here. Focusing on the failure to communicate and on the minutia of whether one kind of music or another is permitted, misses the larger lesson that this is how the collectivist dialectic always operates. According to the ancient Greeks, a form of intellectual exploration called the dialectic pits two ideas, the thesis and antithesis, against one another to result in a synthesis approximating the truth. But this is extremely dangerous. Not all ideas can be synthesized at all. Of course not. Good and evil can't be united into a synthesis because they're polar opposites. Moreover, if the government controls what are offered as the thesis versus antithesis, then its agents can present false dichotomies, steering people towards accepting an overall stance 
that's already been pre-selected by the government. In this case, the matter isn't whether the pub owner was mistaken in not reading the edicts correctly or whether the government made an error in not making its edict clear. The thesis and antithesis both accept a false premise. That is the immoral and unconstitutional idea that the government can issue such edicts in the first place. As critics of collectivism correctly note, collectivists of all stripes, be they Marxist, fascist, democratic, socialist, or any other form of command and control politics, use this false dichotomy to give people choices and options that aren't choices at all. The TSA orders people to get scanned or groped, telling those who don't want to be scanned that they're opting to be groped. That's like a thug threatening to punch you in the gut or slap you in the face and asking you which one you want less. Neither of them is a real option because they're both imposed by force and threats. And such is the case with these bar orders. To get caught in the details of this lack of communication is to miss the point that this communication is one way. It's a command from people in government who don't own that property, and it's a command made against people who simply want to engage in voluntary, peaceful activity among other willing participants. Until we recognize this underlying falsehood and call these thuggish threats what they are, people won't be able to feel secure in their houses and effects, in their plans, or their rights at all. Rights aren't subject to the dialectic, especially when the dialectic is controlled by the government and its choices always assume that politicians can tell people what to do. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Best of luck to the folks in Braintree trying to run that bar or any bar in Massachusetts. What an absolute mess. Absolutely crazy to think that that's one of the places where the American Revolution really gained ground. The shot heard around the world coming from Massachusetts, the spark that ignited so much. It's crazy. Hey, listen, if you're watching on YouTube, please make sure that you like and subscribe and please share these videos with friends. If you have the opportunity, find us over on Rumble as well. All the videos are housed there. We'll see you over on Parlor. We'll see you on Facebook. Don't forget, if you have the opportunity as well, to visit mrctv.org. That's mrctv.org. Maybe go there once, twice, three times a day, however often you can, and look at all the articles that the team is putting together, because oftentimes those don't get translated into videos. I also want to recommend that if you want some great swag, go to mrc-store, and you'll get some great items there that you can give to friends or take it for your own enjoyment. They're really, really fun. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.